So one whistleblower has come forward to show what is happening in children's gender clinics. How many more will join her? Welcome back to the channel today, everyone. So a woman by the name of Jamie Reed has come forward to tell what happened in the Washington University's Transgender Center at the St. Louis Children's Hospital while she was working there. But first, a word for our sponsor for this episode, it's Gays Against Groomers. As you know, I am a contributor to the organization who is fighting the indoctrination and medicalization of children. Go to the website using the link below and use promo code Sarah for 10% off. Okay, so now to Jamie Reed. Uh, the article in the free press titled, I Thought I Was Saving Trans Kids, Now I'm Blowing the Whistle, came out this week, and it was everywhere. And honestly, because of who she is, she could be a very influential person in this fight. As she is a self-described queer woman whose politics are to the left of Bernie Sanders, she just may be able to talk some sense into the leftist, as this is not just some right-wing extremist talking about the harms being done to children. So she actually worked in the intake department of the children's hospital where she saw everything that was happening inside. I mean, and she actually describes everything that we've kind of been talking about on this channel and, and, and the conservatives and libertarians and people like myself have kind of been discussing for a very long time. Um, she saw the ratio in 2015 move more heavily from young males to young females and many of whom had multiple comorbidities that went along with their gender dysphoria. One part that I found really interesting myself was how she said doctors understood the social contagion aspect when it was happening with disorders like Tourette's and DID, uh, but they didn't connect those same dots when it was gender dysphoria. You know, even though most of those patients had never experienced gender issues for most of their childhood. Which explains again the validity of rapid onset gender dysphoria, which, disclaimer, I don't actually like the term. I don't think it's actually gender dysphoria, but that is the term that they are using to describe this social contagion that we're seeing among young females. So she ended up going over then a few cases of when she started to realize the harm that they were doing to these patients. One that struck me was a parent revoked their consent because the treatment hadn't worked. The letter reads, please be advised I'm revoking my consent for this course of medical treatment. Grades have dropped, there's been an inpatient behavioral health visit, and now he's on five different medications, Lexapro, Trezodone, Bucipra, etc. Blank is a shell of his former self, riddled with anxiety. Who knows if it's because of the hormone blockers or other medications. I revoke my consent. I want the hormone blockers removed. Thank you. Then, sadly, she started to talk about the number of detransitioners that she had started to see. But what was really disturbing and, quite frankly, evil was how little the doctors actually cared. One doctor, she stated, said, Why would we spend time on someone who is no longer our patient? Now, I have spoke plenty of times on why all the studies for detransitioners are inaccurate, and this is why. Because doctors simply don't care, they don't want to treat their patients, they don't want to treat them, and they don't want to admit that they may have been wrong in the course of treatment. Now, Reed herself began tracking these patients, but she is just one in hundreds of gender clinics. Most don't care. It's all about the money for them. They did harm, and then they left their former patients out to dry. And speaking with detransitioners that I know, this is all too common for them. Most don't want to treat them or they don't know how. A new friend of mine actually testified in support of a bill banning medicalization of minors. Her doctors testified for it. Now, do you think a doctor that is testifying like that will want to ruin their reputation by admitting they could have gotten it wrong? I don't think so. They think that this is the best treatment yet they're not even willing to see the patients that they have harmed. They're living in this self-fulfilled echo chamber where they think this stuff is great and ignoring all the people that come back that this really isn't that great. It's straight up evil that a doctor would not take care of their patients when they came back. I actually saw another 
article this week about a patient who went to go use the uh, site Plume, which is an online site where you can get medications and they give you doctor recommendations and doctor's letters and everything like that. But she had gone back because she was a detransitioner and she couldn't find anywhere else under her insurance coverage that would treat her. And so going to Plume, she thought that she was going to be able to pay a smaller amount and it would be fine. The moment that she said that she was a detransitioner, they actually just ghosted her. Like she had an appointment, they canceled that appointment with no explanation and just ghosted her and never responded to any of her phone calls. Again, evil. It's straight up disgusting what some of these places are doing. That is how you know that for many, it's all about the money. And I've talked also about how I think most people think that they're doing the right thing. All the whistleblowers that have come out have stated the same thing. They thought they were doing the right thing until they realized what was really going on and the harm that they were actually doing. This is quite simply willful ignorance. We saw it during COVID and we see it in this affirmation care. And finally, Reed was told to get on board or get out as she started to push back on doctors and and other people in the clinic. She was told to get on board or get out. She got out. And now she is doing something to stop what is happening and good on her. You know, I would love to have a conversation with this woman because her bravery in stepping out like this, it's gonna lose her a lot of friends, especially with how she describes herself. That community is not gonna take this very lightly. But I applaud her. And I honestly, I don't care about any of her other views. She is doing the right thing when it comes to a very important issue. And again, I applaud her bravery. It doesn't, it takes a lot to step out away from the mold that they've created. And I just want to remind you, as I mentioned earlier, it just takes one person to make a difference. Uh, The psychiatrist, David Bell, is the person who blew the whistle on the Tavistock Clinic, and now it's shut down following an investigation of the harms that they were doing to their patients. And now there's signals that more and more people are going to start speaking up and blowing the whistle on the clinics that they are or were working for. Because I support legislation in this matter, but at the end of the day, what's really going to make the change are whistleblowers and lawsuits. Those are the only things that are really going to make the difference and and show what's really happening. That is what's going to speak volumes to these doctors who don't seem to care right now. Money talks, lawsuits talk, whistleblowers talk. And both are a welcome sight. But with that, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Click that like and subscribe button and make sure you go support our sponsors. Follow me across all social media platforms, and I will see you next time.